Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the commanding officer, Colonel Christopher M. Murray, welcome to Marine Aircraft Group 36 Change of Command Ceremony, where Colonel Christopher M. Murray will relinquish command to Colonel Brett A. Allison. Today's ceremony is being executed by the officers, Marines, and sailors of Marine Aircraft Group 36. The commander of troops for today's ceremony is Lieutenant Colonel Allison Dratos. The adjutant for today's ceremony is First Lieutenant Keeley. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the invocation given by Commander John B. Sears, Chaplain Corps, United States Navy. Let us pray. Great and mighty God, we gather this morning to look back, to remember, and look forward with hope. We look back to say well done and forward to say Godspeed. For today we bear witness to one of our nation's oldest and most sacred acts, the peaceful transition of power. God, we ask this day to be one of celebration for Colonel Murray and his family. Be with Brendan and his beloved as he diligently studies to better our world. Be with Justin, the next generation of Murray, to be a Kubasaki dragon and answer your call to wear the cloth of our nation. And as her nest soon grows empty, be with Julie. Grant her satisfaction in a job well done as a military spouse and renewed joy in time for herself and with her husband. Be with Colonel Murray as he suffers through long prayers and lofty speeches in a spotlight he'd rather avoid. Let him hear the words of those close to him, for we know that beneath that battle-hardened visage lies an only slightly less hard heart of a warrior, but a heart that is gracious and caring and indeed loving as a leader, husband, father, and friend. So grant him patience as all those who counted a blessing to have served with him spend this time letting him know. Most of all, God, as he receives an award and tokens of deep appreciation, Grant that the gifts he receives in abundance be ones he will never hold in his hands, but ones he holds in his heart forever as he remembers this day and his time in command. God, we wish as well your continued care and guidance for Colonel Allison, Kim, Josh, and Odessa, Grace, Sarah, and David. For the demands of the job ahead, grant them in quality what they will give up of time and quantity. Each day of this experience, let them know their nation gratefully receives their sacrifices as an entire family. Most of all, Heavenly Father, let your chosen son, Brett, know that long before he ever heard the title Marine, you guided, guarded, and girded him for this time, in this place, with this authority, to keep your world safe and all your children free and at peace. Finally, Lord, for all of us who have witnessed these events, do not let us lead the same men and women we entered in, but renew in each of us today our commitment to our values of honor, courage, and commitment that we might be your living witnesses in your world. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Present-day parades in the Marine Corps have their basis in both history and tradition. The mass formation of troops on one long line at close interval made possible the massing of firepower from muzzle-loaded muskets of the past. The adjutant forms a line of battle, and in those early days, that line consisted of two or three ranks, much like in the parade you will see today.
The mission of MAG-36 is to support the Marine Air Ground Task Force with combat-ready expeditionary assault support aircraft and, when directed, plan and conduct aviation operations as a med-level aviation combat element. This history of Marine Aircraft Group 36 begins as Helicopter Transport 36 was commissioned at Marine Corps Facility Santa Ana on 2 June 1952. While VMO-6 was making history in Korea as the first Marine Helicopter Squadron in U.S. history to conduct combat operations, MAG-36 squadrons consisting of HMR-361, 362, and 363 were devoting long hours to testing and improving the techniques of employing the HRS-1 helicopters and amphibious ship-to-shore movements. Throughout the 1990s, MAG-36 units participated in a variety of contingency operations. In 1995, MAG-36 units conducted relief operations in Kobe, Japan, after 6,400 people lost their lives in a massive earthquake, and also participated in the withdrawal of United Nations forces from Somalia during Operation United Shield. Nearly every year, MAG-36 deploys as a MEB-level aviation combat element often supporting humanitarian assistance in disaster relief operations. Today, Marine Aircraft Group 36 is made up of over 2,000 Marines and sailors from six squadrons supporting training exercises all across the Pacific and around the world. The Marines and sailors from Marine Aircraft Group 36 remain prepared for when the nation calls. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the March on of the Colors and remain standing for the flame of the National Anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated.
Now taking his place in the reviewing area is Major General Eric E. Austin, Commanding General, 1st Marine Aircraft Wing. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for honors to the Commanding General of 1st Marine Aircraft Wing, Major General Eric E. Austin. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Now taking his place in the reviewing area is the commanding officer of Marine Aircraft Group 36, Colonel Christopher M. Murray. Thank you all for joining us to the band. Again, that 
Thanks, John. Wonderful. Uh, it's a busy time of the year for you all. Thank you for the, uh, being here today. And a great show to the uh, formation in front of you representing many more Marines are representing here. I'll tell you, the reason we're inside that today uh, is because uh, of who uh, Colonel Murray is. He's a humble guy. And he doesn't want to operate. He doesn't want to have a big impact on this group that's trying to do good work day in and day out. And so uh, we're here uh, with these Marines representing the much larger uh, formation. It's our big one. Thank you for the great work you've done. Uh, so this is the part where sometimes I'll start to talk about all the things that the group has done over the past two years and what they're doing the next and watching two folks sit here rewrite their whole speech and so forth. So I'm not going to do that today to you, gentlemen, but I will tell you, if you listen to the history that we presented, uh, Mike 36 is an amazing uh, group of uh, pioneers in the Marine Corps uh, helicopter aviation, assault support uh, aviation in 1952, Santa Ana, El Toro, acquitted themselves well in uh, Vietnam, uh, incorporated attack helicopters. 1969, uh, just a couple years ago, moved here to the time, been here ever since. Been supporting the 31st Marine Amphibious Unit, now the 31st Mew, for over 50 years. Uh, and uh, arrayed before you, uh, is the, the most lethal weapon in the group 36 of the Marines in front of you, but behind them uh, are an amazing array of, uh, of hardware uh, that these Marines uh, leverage the uh, H and UH-1 Yankee Zulu, uh, brand new uh, aircraft. If anyone in the free world wants an airplane that can land and take off in an unprepared zone, fly a couple thousand miles, uh, do our nation's bidding, land in an unprepared zone, it's an MB-22 right there, and they're coming in the Marine Corps, it's Westpac, they're coming in 36. Certainly uh, our heavy lift, uh, 53s, uh, and then uh, our MWSS and uh, balance team that undergird every success of uh, this wonderful organization. So it's an, it's an amazing legacy. And uh, so what, what we do with this team, they can't hang. This team knows this uh, AO is extraordinary. From Hokkaido to Korea to the Philippines, uh, and uh, doing some amazing stuff to support the work toward the consequence. Uh, things have changed in this theater. In a couple of short years, they've been here since 1969. used to be an RSO, and I know that we flowed forces into contingency crisis in theaters. Now we're thinking of uh, looking at it through a little different lens and maybe be fighting for the time. So it's a mindset change, and, uh, and uh, MAG 36 is embraced this, is doing some critical thinking, and it's really doing some planning to, to make a change uh, under Colonel Murray's uh, leadership. Supporting the 31st Mutants is a huge tax on this team, uh, and they do it extraordinarily well. Uh, so uh, Port Starboard with the two VMOs that support it, so that's an amazing uh, capability. And then the other thing that they do is uh, they lead the uh, aviation component of the uh, Alert Contingency MACTAP for Third Marine Expeditionary Force, which very uh, often uh, responds to conflict and crisis, mostly crisis, uh, mostly humanitarian assistance and disaster relief. And guess what? We're on a three point stance right now getting ready to uh, respond to the So we already talked, we'll talk later. <laughs> that, it's an amazing thing, they've done amazing work, and I've seen it firsthand, and I'm proud to see it in front of you and brag about it a little bit. So let's. It's a well led match, so let's talk about uh, Colonel Murray real quick. He's got an amazing pedigree, uh, as was stated. He probably doesn't like us talking about it. Uh, you know, there, there, there are two different kinds of there's a lot of changes in command. But uh, in a formation like this, there's one where the outgoing commander gets an award. Again, humble guy didn't want the award, so don't tell him this, but you're scratching, but we're going to give him to him a little less than later this afternoon. But he uh, certainly has done a wonderful job as a group commander. Uh, and a unique pedigree. So uh, both he and Julie are uh, Kentucky High grads. We got here a couple years ago. Uh, came back. His first tour was in uh, the HMN 265. Commanded the uh, VMN 265 and comes back as the group commander. So uh, this officer knows this unit extraordinarily well. He's done well in terms outside of the uh, first pawn three method. But he was the perfect pedigree, the perfect uh, leader for MAC 36 in the past two years. Uh, and he's certainly undergirded by. Julie, Justin, Brendan, uh, and a wonderful team that enables him to uh, perform at the level that he does. So to the whole family, thank you for all you've done to, to let him be the great officer that, uh, that he is. And uh, everyone that knows you know, uh, Team Murray knows it's a, it's a great, coherent, uh, amazing Marine Corps family. So, uh, scrunchy, uh, well done. And as I was thinking this morning about my comments, I was going to use the term prisoner exchange. It came to mind, but then I decided that's kind of a bad, uh, you know, Bad way to talk about going to the wing staff or going to Group 36 for a uh, while. Well, so let's, look, let's talk transfer portal, right? You with me? So we're the, the transfer portal is open. So uh, we're having the good fortune to have a, a, an officer of his pedigree coming to the uh, 
Wingstaff to be the, the G3, a job that uh, the MCA's become a commander knows extraordinarily well. Uh, I mentioned I just changed the command a couple weeks ago, but uh, it's, uh, I will tell you without kind of hesitation, it's one of the most important jobs in the Third Expeditionary Force, and so we're lucky to have you join the team. So thank you, well done. Uh, and to uh, another side of the transfer portal, we've got uh, Colonel Allison, who uh, I first met when I was in Quantico, and he came out and supported some of our planning efforts, and I immediately took a liking to him. But when I really got to know him uh, was last August uh, with him, David, and Ozzy, their dog, on the Patriot Express, right? That's when you get to know someone. He's had one row in front of me, just what he wanted was a brand new wing commander right behind him. Uh, but uh, it was a miserable experience, as you all know, that we on the Patriot Express, but we made the most of it. And then I've had the very good fortune of serving with him. He's done two years on the wing staff uh, and was selected for command uh, after his first year. Uh, and he, too, is the right officer to come here at this time. He understands the theater. He understands uh, the challenges. He understands the wing. And we find his wing down his back. Uh, and uh, he's a great person, a great leader. leader. Uh, also undergirded by a great family. Uh, Kim, uh, Sergeant Josh, uh, Allison is, uh, and his wife, uh, recently uh, married, are unable to join us because they're out in the and Collins doing good work in the second time. Seventh Marines, uh, Grace, Sarah, and David, uh, you know, you guys are a great team, so thank you on behalf of the Commandant of the Marine Board, First Lawn, and the Back Team Six, and what you've done for the only what you guys are going to do in the same conditions for this fine officer and you're going to be successful. So that's enough for me, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I just uh, uh, I'm honored to be here today, uh, and I gotta say, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to present the uh, yeah, you have to do this. The former commander, Marine Air Captain 36, uh, and a good friend, a good officer who's coming to the wing, uh, Colonel Chris Murray.
and exercises over the last couple of years. Thanks for all your support. All right, uh, to my family, I think if my parents figured out the, the technology, they're watching this, uh, this live stream. Uh, my grandfather was a Marine. My dad's a 32-year uh, retired colonel. Uh, both of them certainly uh, taught me a lot about what it means uh, to be a Marine officer. Uh, neither one of them ever pressured me. He even mentioned uh, becoming a Marine. I think he was pretty, my dad was pretty surprised. Nothing but support for my parents, uh, so thank you for that. I appreciate it. My son Brendan, uh, I came out here about a month before he graduated high school, uh, so I missed that. And then Julie came out here about 10 minutes after he graduated high school uh, and kicked him in the butt and said, Here's the keys to the car, drive down to Florida. Good luck in school. Uh, he ran down there playing human soccer for a year uh, and decided he wanted to focus on. Uh, on studies a little bit more, uh, made a mature uh, decision uh, to, to move back up to Virginia and go to school and uh, me and your mom are, are super proud of your independence and, and uh, what you've learned. Not sure about this high school school, I think. I don't know if that's going to work out, but we're not even trying. Justin, uh, my youngest, you know, he's uh, spent the vast majority of his, of his school age years in Virginia, uh, all but two, and those two were out of here around 7405 and man. So much like, uh, you know, like many, many kids that come out there now and get ripped out of high school after their sophomore year and forced into, into high school out here. I didn't have to do that as a kid, which I'm not grateful for. It's, uh, it's definitely tough. Uh, he's done well. All far East soccer managed to get a, a rising scholarship. He's, he's off to the second best school in Florida, and we're super proud of him. Finally, my wife, uh, my wife Julie, uh, who's certainly the glue uh, of the family, mostly because she's the hammer of, of the family, and also uh, 35 years ago, I think I'm counting, is, is when we met uh, just down the road. Uh, she's stuck by my side for 31 years now, uh, as we've gone down this, uh, this journey, kept us great, kept me focused on uh, things that uh, are important. Not exactly sure what's uh, coming next, uh, but we'll figure it out. Right, let me finish up here with uh, talk about the mag just uh, a little bit. UWSS 172, you know, center of gravity, uh, mag 36. There's no way that, that we could succeed as a mag the way that we operate if we did not have uh, UWSS 172 in direct support of us. The 18 exercises that they participated in over the last two years across six different uh, countries on everything from building schools in Thailand, airfield damage repair uh, in the Philippines, uh, and you know, one of the things that I'm, I'm most uh, proud of, and it doesn't seem like a lot, but uh, you know, integrating with Japanese aviation uh, is very important. It's very hard. It takes a, a very long time. Not too long ago, they were far from a product of the Japanese H-60. They manage uh, 80 transfers, 80 acceptances per year. They support all the units on Potema. They support the 31st VU. Sometimes they support the 13th VU. And they do it all throughout, uh, all, all throughout the theater. Incredible job. I think the biggest compliment you can give to, to that squadron. Uh, and I've had 10 EDP COs roll through here. And every single one of them has told me on their way out that 36 is the best mouse uh, that, that they have ever dealt with, and I think it's the customer service attitude that that mouse takes uh, towards what we use on the flight line. All right, HMH. I've watched uh, you know, the, the readiness of the HMH community out here at Contema steadily incline, uh, increase over, over the last two years, probably from a, a 
point where there was some question about the relevancy uh, out here. Uh, but I'll tell you, there's, there's no longer that question. I think everybody agrees uh, that we need heavy lift in this theater uh, as much as we need anything else. Uh, and the work that those planes have done to get those airplanes uh, in the flying shape. Uh, the flights down to the Philippines up the mainland around the southwest islands. HLA, you know, kind of a similar situation. Not sure how they're going to fit into the fight out here at 3 uh, But the, the HLA EVPs have come out and they've developed TTPs for, for uh, maritime strike. And uh, certainly show that there is uh, a critical role that they fill uh, with uh, you know, a long range precision, precision ship killing uh, munition. Uh, and, and they certainly are going to make a lot of conversation also about the numbers of aircraft. Finally, uh, the VMMs 262 and 265. I'm sorry, I, I don't know many units uh, in the Marine Corps that are busier uh, than these two squadrons. Do a year at the MAG, go to the MU, get your break from the MU, come right back to the MAG, deal with, with exercises, deal with PCS cycles, uh, readiness issues, lack of ranges, weather challenges, uh, you, you name it. Uh, they continue. Form. They put up the sorties required for all the frags, all the exercises for ACM, and somehow they manage uh, to maintain T2 uh, readiness levels, if not T1 readiness levels, the entire time, which is, which is well better than the rest of uh, the V-22 fleet. All right, CG likes to say that, uh, you know, MAG-36 is a blue collar MAG, and I agree they are, that's exactly kind of the reputation that that I wanted for this mag, and just put your head down and, and do the work, uh, get it done. I would also say, sir, that they're the, the gold standard for rotary wing ops and uh, aviation ground support. It's certainly been my pleasure uh, to serve with them for the last two years. All right. I think that wraps up my uh, job opportunity on the Tema, unless time is going to quit. Brett and Kim, you guys are taking over uh, an incredible mag. They've been my neighbors. Uh, Brett's been my neighbor for the last year, um, which could be awkward when your replacement is living right next door to you. But super gracious uh, and humble the whole time. I really caught him, you know, polishing the sign on my house once. It's yours now. I took it off sitting outside the back door. Uh, but incredible officer, incredible leader, good family. Uh, and I look forward to watching you. So you're new uh, commanding officer of MAC 36, Corporate Allison. Thank you so 
so much for all the love that you guys have provided over the years. I thank you for uh, keeping me going. And uh, that thank you to my wife and family. Uh, she has been just a blessing for a while. Thank you for uh, the support. And really for enduring uh, 25 years with me. So, the, uh, those of you who don't know, we're actually celebrating our 25th wedding anniversary this weekend. So, I'm also kind of surprised.